Hey everyone, welcome back to All Up In Your Business. I'm attorney Aiden Durham with 180 Laco in Colorado. And today we're gonna to talk about how to get a registered trademark for a standard character mark like a business name or slogan. A few weeks ago, I posted a video about how to get a trademark for a business name and a logo. That video was kind of general. I talked a lot about some of the prep to go through before you submit the trademark application, like doing a trademark clearance search, making sure you have a good, strong trademark that's worth registering, some of the more procedural aspects of the trademark application and the application process, things like that. This time around, we're gonna skip over a lot of that stuff and focus more on the specifics and specifically as they relate to doing a trademark application for a standard character mark. So if you're looking for more of an overall kind of high level overview, then check out my video Fred, that I did previously. I'll link to that in the description. This one, we're talking about standard character marks and in a couple of weeks, I'm gonna do a similar video, but focusing on design marks like logos. So if you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe to my channel and click that little bell so you get notified when I post that next video because you won't wanna miss it. And if you wanna learn even more about trademarks and trademark registration and how this whole thing works, then you can check the description for a link to download my free Brandish DIY trademark guide. All right, let's Let's talk about trademarks. So I said we're going to be talking mostly about standard character marks in this episode of All Up In Your Business. Let's start by talking about what's a standard character mark mean? What does that mean? When I say standard character mark, I'm talking about a trademark that is just words, just standard characters and there's no design element to it. We compare this to a design mark, which does have some kind of design element to it. So standard character marks are going to apply to things that don't have any design. Things like a business name, product names, service names, maybe a slogan or a tagline, any kind of brand indicator that you're using in your business that consists of just words and there's no design element to it, that's a standard character mark. Usually when we start talking about, okay, standard character mark, design mark, the question comes up, well, should I register my trademark for my business name or should I do the trademark registration for my logo? What if my logo includes my business name in it? This topic itself may actually be worthy of a whole video dedicated to this topic. So comment, let me know if you'd like me to do an entire video talking about should I trademark my name or my logo. Ultimately though, you gotta keep in mind that your business name and your business logo are two different trademarks and registering them will do two very different things. Overall, like if, if money was no object, if we had all the money in the world to throw at our trademarks, Let's do all of them. I want you to register your business name as a standard character mark. I want you to register your logo. I want you to register all variations of your logo. I want you to register every trademark you have. That's not always possible. It's not always realistic. In the beginning, usually, I suggest let's start with registering the standard character mark for the name and we can address the logo later. But that always depends on my client's goals, their specific circumstances and situation, how they're going to be using the name versus the logo. There's a lot of things that go into it. Generally speaking though, if it's one or the other, I say start with the name as a standard character mark. Another question that commonly pops up when we're talking about registering a standard character mark is what do I include in this? Let's say we're doing a trademark registration for a business name. A lot of businesses are, are organized as LLCs or corporations. And when we organize a business as an LLC, we have to typically include some designation like LLC or LTD. Our name has to include some hint that this is a limited liability company. So that's my entity name. My technical business name is 180 Laco LLC. Do I have to include LLC in my trademark? Or if I'm organized as a corporation, do I have to include the ink in my trademark? Or let's say I've, I've got the domain. I hear that all the time. I want to register as trademark. I've got the domain name. Uh, do I need to include the .com in my trademark registration? Really, there's no, there's no answer to this. It 
depends on what is the trademark you are going to use. When you are going to use your business name, your product or service name, what name is that that you're going to use? That's the trademark. When you're marketing and selling your products and services, if you and your customers, your clients, the general public refer to your business as business name LLC, then that is the trademark that you're using. And so it's not should I include LLC in my trademark, it's does my trademark include LLC. Same with kind of the dot com thing. Let's think about some companies. Booking.com is uh, they had a pretty important uh, Supreme Court case a few years ago concerning the dot com part of their trademark. Booking.com, when we talk about, oh yeah, I, I booked my website or I booked my vacation on booking.com, when we see their commercials, it's booking.com. No one says booking. Yeah, I used booking. We say booking.com. Booking.com is the trademark. It's not just their domain. It's not just their website. It's the trademark. Same with like 1-800-CONTACTS. I, I think that company's still around. That's their phone number is 1-800-CONTACTS, but they're, that's also their trademark. That's how we refer to them. I, that might be their business name or their LLC or corporation name, but really that doesn't matter. Their trademark is 1-800-CONTACTS. If they included just contacts, if their trademark was just contacts, then that it wouldn't, it wouldn't be a trademark. So should I include it isn't the question. Does my trademark include LLC.com, whatever elements, that's the question really you should be asking. So let's dive into some of the kind of more specifics with the actual trademark application. So when you're ready to do a trademark application and actually register the trademark for your business name or your slogan, where are we gonna do that? We're gonna do that at uspto.gov. The application is available directly through the United States Patent and Trademark Office, uspto.gov. One of the first pages on the application is going to ask about what is this trademark? We have to give the application, we have to give the USPTO info on what is the trademark. The first option, we can select a standard character mark or a design mark. As we've already discussed, design mark or special form mark means a logo, a design, something where there's a design element to it. We're not dealing with those. This time around, we're dealing specifically with standard character marks. And we're going to need to type in what the trademark is. Again, this is where we go back to, do I include LLC? Do I include .com? What do I include? This is where we have to be specific about what is our trademark and exactly what does it include. Things that don't matter here. Capitalization. You can type in your trademark all lowercase, all uppercase, a mix of both. Ultimately, it doesn't matter. Again, standard character marks. There's no design. There's no, we're not taking into account any design. It's just the characters, the words that we're focused on. So capitalization doesn't matter. But things like punctuation and spacing of the words, those can make a difference. Not every time there isn't a, a clear black black and white answer on like, do I need to include an exclamation point or a period? If it uh, changes the meaning or the connotation or the commercial impression of the trademark, then it can make a difference. Same thing with spacing of the words. Let's say 180 Law Co. Again, is my trademark. The way I have it registered is 180 Law Co. as three separate words. I could have spaced or, you know, pushed them all together to be 180 Laco as one word. Those technically are two different trademarks. So spacing does make a difference. Punctuation can make a difference. Capitalization doesn't. But again, we want to focus on what is the trademark I'm using. Put it in the application as you are going to be actually using it. On the application, we're also going to have to specify the goods and services that we are using or are going to use the trademark in connection with. And we have to tell them the filing basis for our trademark. Typically for most of us, this is going to be either 1A current use filing basis or a 1B intent to use filing basis. Current use means we are currently using it in commerce. Our trademark is out there in commerce. The general public 
seize it when they encounter our goods or services. Intent to use means we're not using it in commerce yet, but we have a bona fide intent to do so. If we're filing on a 1A basis, we're gonna have to submit a specimen along with the application. If we're filing on a 1B intent to use basis, we don't have to submit that specimen just yet with the application. We'll do it later on in the process after the examining attorney issues a notice of allowance. But with a standard character mark, there are sometimes, oh, I'm getting a knock at the door. Hold on. Hello? Hi there. Hi. How you doing? Good, how are you? Good, so give you a heads up. We noticed in our chairs a wall that it's like electrified. It's like when you touch part of it, you get shocked. Oh shit, okay. Yeah, so your building might partially be electrified. Okay, like so on, on like the out like side? The window sill itself. So I went to open his window and got shocked. It was oh, the wow. most bizarre thing. Wow. So then like, we secured all the power and everything, all the breakers, and it's you still get shocked even with all the power off. Shit, so, okay. Just a heads up that okay. you might, if just, <laughs> I don't know if you want to just touch your window still, maybe it's if you get a little <laughs> Right, test it out. Off, okay. Well then yeah, I'll flip my uh, breakers too and yeah, see if that changes you anything. Maybe so you don't get a wild shock. Yeah. Out, so. well, thanks. Okay. Thanks yeah. for that. Of course. I appreciate it. No problem. <laughs> okay. Don't touch the window sills, you guys. Pardon that. I've just I've just been alerted by my next door neighbor that our window sills might be electrified. Uh, Okay, regardless of the filing basis, whether we're filing on a 1A or a 1B basis, and whether we're submitting the specimen now or later, there are some common issues and questions that typically come up when we're doing that. The first is, okay, so I applied as a standard character mark. Does that mean I can't use the name in my logo or are they not going to accept a specimen if they see that I'm using this name in my logo or in some design? Nope, that's fine. Again, we're registering as a standard character mark, which protects it regardless of how it looks. So you can use it in any design and it's going to be protected. The words are going to be protected because of that standard character mark registration. So if we submit a specimen showing proof of our use of the trademark and our specimen has our logo that includes the name, the standard character mark, that's just fine. That's perfectly acceptable. Again, using my business, my trademark as an example, my trademark registration is for 180 LACO as a standard character mark, but I could give them a screenshot of my website showing that I'm using the name in connection with my legal services. And it's fine that it appears in my logo. That's not an issue. But going back to that whole what is the trademark? What do we include in it? That potentially can be an issue that can come up with the specimen. The specimen, what they see on the specimen has to match the trademark as you applied for it on the application. Design doesn't matter, but the characters themselves, because that's what we're focused on, the characters have to be the same. So we've got all that taken care of. We put the trademark in the application. We assigned our filing basis. Maybe we submitted that specimen because we're on a 1A filing basis and we hit submit. We paid our filing fee and our application is now officially submitted to the USPTO. Where do we go from here? For most of us, we're gonna be going nowhere. We're gonna be sitting and waiting for a while. Currently it's taking 10 to 12 months, a bit closer to 12 months right now, before someone at the USPTO even sets eyes on your application, before anyone even touches it. Nothing's going to happen with your application for at least 10 months going off of current uh, processing times with the USPTO. But after that, after about 10 months, your application is going to be assigned to an examining attorney at the USPTO who is going to look over your application. They're going to do a search to see if it conflicts with any, any other pending applications or any trademark registrations and to make sure all the info they need is there and that this trademark is actually available and eligible for registration in the US. Before you even hear anything back from the examining attorney though, you are going to start receiving spam and solicitations in the mail and via email. These are almost always going to be 100% garbage. If you get anything 
an email that doesn't come directly from USPTO.gov, if you get anything in the mail that doesn't come from the United States Patent and Trademark Office, you can ignore it, it's garbage, but you're gonna get them. Don't worry, I can guarantee you that. So the examining attorney is going to be assigned after about 10 months or so. If there are any issues with your application or if they find some conflict with a pending reg application or a, a current registered trademark, they'll issue an office action and we'll have some opportunity to respond to that office action and try to resolve any outstanding issues or argue around any initial rejections that we might get. After we get over any potential hurdles with office actions, if uh, all that's resolved, then the examining attorney is going to approve your trademark for publication in the Trademark Official Gazette, and the trademark will be published for 30 days to give kind of the general public an opportunity to oppose or challenge your trademark registration. Assuming that doesn't happen, if there are no oppositions and you skirt through the publication phase just fine, this is typically going to be the last kind of step in the process depending on your filing basis. If you filed on a 1A current use basis, then the process is pretty much done. There's still some wait time. We still have to let, you know, the USPTO kind of tie up their loose ends. But usually within about two to three months after publication, the trademark will be registered and we'll get a glorious certificate and will be a grand, wonderful day. If we filed on a 1B intent to use basis, after that publication phase, the examining attorney will issue a notice of allowance and we'll have six months from that date to then submit a statement of use along along with a specimen, that proof of use of our trademark, or we can request some extensions if needed. But then once that statement of use has been filed and accepted by the USPTO, then again, just waiting a few more months for the USPTO to do their thing. And then ultimately, woo, woo, trademark party, we've got our certificate, it's a great day. So when it comes to doing a trademark registration with the USPTO for a standard character mark, really the biggest things that you're gonna wanna focus on are making sure we know what this trademark is. We know what our trademark is going to be. We know that the trademark we're putting on the application is going to match the trademark as we're using it or as we are planning to use it in our business and we'll be able to provide that kind of proof to the USPTO. Of course, however, this is a very simplified, very simplified explanation of the application process and everything that goes into it. It is much more complicated and complex than it sounds, even when I, I break it down so it sounds simple. It's not, it's not simple. And so because of that, it's always best to consult with a trademark attorney if you're interested in getting a trademark registered for your business name or your slogan. Even better yet, have an experienced trademark attorney help you through the process. If you're looking for more info on how to get a trademark registered, if maybe you want to do it yourself, but you need a little extra hand holding, or if you're curious about working with a lawyer, you can check the description down below for a few helpful links, including a link to download my free Brandish DIY trademark guide. If you learned a thing or two, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and like this video. Like I said earlier, if you guys want me to do a whole video kind of talking about should I do my logo or my business name, comment and let me know. Don't forget to subscribe and click that little bell so you get notified when I post that next video talking about how to get a trademark for your logo or design. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Aiden Durham and I'll see you next time. Great. Whoa. Trademark's done and I'm not electrified yet. Should I touch this? I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. If I get electrified. Okay. I'm not electrified yet. Just in case I die. Just in case I die, you guys will see. Okay. I'm not electrocuted, it's okay.